Okay, so welcome to the YouTube video guys. Just got up about 10 minutes ago. It's uh, a little after 8 in the morning over here. Um, kind of waking up later. I used to be on that, that 5 a.m., even 4 a.m. grind, bro. That was insane. Um, but now that I have new goals, that just, that 4 or 5 a.m. doesn't support it, I'll be honest. Uh, waking up a little bit later helps out <laughs> a lot. So today's video, I'm just going to run you through my day-to-day -day life. We'll do a full day of eating, everything I'm eating on a bulk. And we'll go hit some chest with Angela, hopefully, if he's up by that time. He likes to wake up <laughs> really late. I go train around 5 every day. He's up at like 5 every day. <laughs> um, I think it's also his birthday, so maybe we should uh, take him out somewhere or something like that. Go eat some dinner. That'd be a good idea. So yeah, it's just a full day of eating, training, and maybe just some yapping. Talking about some good fitness stuff is the best way to put it. So, big goals in life right now. What is my big goal? And you should ask yourself this. What is your big goal in life? Where are you trying to go? What is that massive goal that is going to be life-changing? That you almost don't believe you can accomplish. But you're going after right big goal right now is pro bodybuilder i f b b pro bodybuilder don't really care about the name i f b b pro bodybuilder just want to make it to that level if you get what i'm saying because in order to get there you have to do certain things right you have to level up in certain ways you know your dieting has to be almost flawless all year even when you're bulking you know it has to be good your training has to be next level your mindset's got to be next level you know your coaching has got to be next level you gotta you, you gotta have that coach you gotta have a plan that's gonna get you there because there is no like the thing is there is no exact plan to get there you can't search up how to go ifbb pro online right there, there really ain't no fucking shit out there. We're gonna, what they're going to say is get big, shred down, and do this show, right? It's a lot more complicated than that, okay? you A, a lot of things are involved. Supplementation is one thing that's involved. The, that's figuring that shit out. That's, that, that's the hard part. So, that's the big goal right now. Why, you may ask? Because I've been in bodybuilding for a while. I've been a gym lifter, you know, an average gym goer. And we'll just fall in love with it, you know. It's my life. So, I want to take it to the highest levels. And when I was out in Thailand, I just got so many compliments on my physique, I'll be honest. So, I was like, if I'm getting compliments on my travel physique, what the fuck could I do if I really put my head down? Did a major bulk, like I'm talking up to 240, 250, most likely 250 because I'm already almost 220 a month into the bulk. Um, it's like almost 20 pounds with abs. Um, if I got up there, let the muscle mature for a while, you know, so it actually stays there, then cut down and just try to get qualified. Because what you got to do is you, you, you got to go to a show, you got to win that show, and then you get qualified to go to a pro winning show, from my understanding. Um, that's basically how it works. And once you win your pro card, you have to go to a, uh, a pro show, and you have to win the pro show in order to go to the Olympia. So it's kind of how it works right there. Um, that's why you kind of want to get your pro card so you can start competing at a pro level. But then once you compete at a pro level, you have to compete at an Olympia level. <laughs> um, so it's it's a hard sport, you know. There's it's very it's a very hard sport to win. I will tell you that it takes years and years and years of dedication and detail to the small, minute things. You know, like every time I'm staying up late and I see that my clock says twelve o'clock, and I wake up, you know, I gotta wake up at seven. I'm just thinking to myself, that's seven hours of sleep. There's somebody out there who's going to get eight. Can't let that happen, man. You know, even though I'm probably like three years away from the pro levels or whatever. Um, 
So that's kind of how you got to think as one. So yeah, that's the big goal. Um, so what that entails is doing a lot of bulking right now. That's why I run you through everything. I really want to record the journey because when I look back at bodybuilders I look up to, they have a lot of YouTube videos about their show, but they don't have a lot of YouTube or, or about their prep, but they don't have a lot of YouTube videos about like before that, when they were bulking up, when they were actually doing what got them the ability to cut down and look sick. So yeah, just run you guys through fucking everything. Um, Pretty much, and then maybe we'll make some. Uh, we'll do some more YouTube videos on here, talking about different shit, different parts of it. Um, always try to include a workout and stuff like that. So that's kind of kind of where I want to go with everything. So hopefully you're excited. Um, I'm gonna continue to wake up. <laughs> Usually my morning routine right now is just like make some coffee, make my bed, sit down, and just like play with my phone for a little. Um, try to scroll on there, but like. You know, maybe I, I got something I got to do today, which I got to look at my phone to remember because I'm kind of dumb. Um, look at my email, see what my friends in my group chat were texting last night, <laughs> um, check my DMs and stuff like that. So I kind of just play around there um, until I'm like, all right, do something with yourself. Go do some cardio about 20 minutes in the morning just to kind of wake myself up is the best way to put it. I'm not even doing that like in a high setting. I'm walking at like two miles per hour nothing crazy just want to wake myself up to be honest uh do that eat shower i got a call today at 11 a.m um for it's what do you call it it's like a client interview somebody who wants to join team handsome pr my coaching team so usually on these calls it's like an hour long i just run people through everything like a presentation what they get what i'll do for you um talk to them about the problems and so on and see if it's good and hopefully sign them up because I like bringing people onto the team. It makes me excited because now I get more friends. <laughs> um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And yeah, I'll catch you. All right, boys, we are on the treadmill right now getting our morning steps in. I don't really do this cardio for quote unquote fat loss. Um, I don't even do it on the same intensity. I do for fat loss, I do about like 20 minutes, but it's on a light incline. I got it on about a 6% here and just two miles per hour. If I was trying to do fat loss, it would be three miles per hour and 10 incline. And I'd be doing around 30, 35, maybe 40 minutes. Um, I just do 20 to kind of wake me up, get my heart pumping a little. You know, while I'm putting on so much weight, if I don't do any cardio, I tend to just get really high blood pressure and I feel really tired while I'm working out. Because you gotta realize, like, um, last week I put on nine pounds, you know? And so my heart has to adjust for that, you know? That's nine pounds, bro. And I wasn't doing any cardio, and my workouts were cuts just kind of going to shit, and I was feeling like shit every day. So I'm trying to do a little cardio every morning while I'm getting on weight. Um, one thing I wanna talk about and kinda rant about is the best way to put it is how much more progress you will make when you have somebody on your side who is ahead of you somebody who has actually done what you want to do or somebody who has teach people how to do what you want to do and this is for any area of life it's a coach you know I was just talking to somebody in my DMs and he was asking me all these questions about his bulk and blah 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 and I'm honestly getting a little frustrated at him because it seemed like to me he knew nothing about it. And mind you, this is somebody who kind of started training around the same time I started training. So we've kind of been going at this stuff for the same amount of time. He has similar goals with me and so on. And I'm just like, holy crap. How do you not know anything? <laughs> like, I, I, I didn't be rude. I gave him really, really good advice, but... For his goals in life, I'm just so interested in why he hasn't invested in himself. Like he wants to, he wants to build muscle, he wants to get big, and he's trying to do a bulk, but he's just getting fat. Um, 
And he also wants to do social media with it all and stuff like that. So I'm just like, bro, why are you still going about it without a plan, without the right advice? You know, you're trying to reinvent the fucking wheel. That's what people try to do, is when they want to do something as simple as just changing the way their body looks, starting a business, changing their mindset or whatever, they try to reinvent the fucking wheel. They try to figure it out all about themselves. Why? Why? <laughs> people always say, oh, I don't have enough money to get a coach or to learn something. Because the only, the only time like the information you're going to get from like online or somebody is going to really work is when you pay for it. One reason is the more you pay, the more you listen, straight up. <laughs> like the, the more you pay, the more you listen. Um, like if my coach was coaching me for free, I wouldn't listen proudly. <laughs> Now that I'm paying him money, I'm always thinking about, oh, okay, I should probably follow this because I'm paying this dude money and it would just be stupid not to follow what he's going to tell me because that's the whole reason I hired him. Um, reason number two is because you got you to gotta get that person talking to you. Because like, as a content creator myself, as somebody who tries to help other people online, I can make content, I can make YouTube videos talking about something but this is me trying to say it to the general public. When somebody comes to me, or when I go to my coach with an exact question, he gives me an exact answer. And that moves me ahead so much farther in life. Because now I only have to try once to get the right answer. Somebody who doesn't have that person who's gonna give them the exact answer, is gonna have to try maybe four times. They're gonna have to try different information they hear from a YouTube video, from a TikTok, from this random person in the gym, right? They're gonna have to try all these different times to find the right information. When you just, when if you could have somebody who's done what you wanna do, just tell you once, and boom, you're farther ahead. So, he was kinda of just asking me all these things about the bulk. Um, like, he's get, I'm getting fat on him, blah, blah, blah. Like, should I keep doing my cardio while on a bulk? Well, duh. <laughs> a bulk doesn't mean you get fat. You know, like, people think, uh, Oh, I got to conserve all my calories and energy for bulking up. You know, back in the golden era, the golden era bodybuilders, they never did bulks. Like, from what I understand, they never did bulks. Um, in, in terms of how we do bulks nowadays is the best way to put it. So, like, when a lot of people go into bulks, they go on these insane amount of calories, they drop all the cardio, blah, 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 and then they do a cut, right? Back in the day, I guess they used to just kind of like lean gain all year round, but then blow up for a show. They, they used like, you know, of course they used supplements to blow up for a show, but it was, it was a little different back then. Um, so I think the smartest way to go about it is you gotta get into a routine. Right, you gotta get your training down, you gotta get your diet down, you gotta get your cardio down, you gotta get your sleep down, right? Those are the big four things, really, in bodybuilding. You get all these things down, it doesn't matter if you're bulking or you're cutting. You just get them down, right? You get the, the routine down, you know, what am I gonna eat day to day, when am I gonna eat, how am I gonna train, when's my rest days, what's my split, how much am I gonna sleep, how much am I gonna do cardio, right? Or when am I gonna do cardio? These are all wins. Then you ask yourself the question, how much, okay? Depending on your goals. How much cardio am I gonna do? Well, if you're bulking up, you wanna keep it lower, 15, 20 minutes, you still wanna do some. You still want to burn some calories, okay? If you're cutting down, you might wanna keep it higher, 30, 40 minutes, right? But you wanna continually do it all year round. Okay, so how much am I gonna eat, you know? I already know when I'm gonna eat five meals a day, but how much of it? Well. My BMR is 3,000 calories. So for a bulk, I'm going to start at 32, and I'm going to run that for a couple months. And then once I hit a plateau, and I'm not putting on any more size, I'm going to bump it up to 33, you know? Keep it low on the lower end. Try not to get super, super fat. Um, how much am I going to rest, you know? And so on and so on. That's just the way I kind of look at everything. Um, Yes. A lot of people are uh, really lost and they hear advice from TikTok and shit like that. And it's probably not the best. 
you know. Um, you got to look at the person who's telling you the advice too. Are their goals similar to you? Are they just genetically looking good? Because a guy can just genetically look good and tell you what to do. And you think, oh, this is like, this is gold. Like, this is what I got to do, right? But for you, it might not work out. I would always take advice from like real bodybuilders. People who go and compete and people who also coach other people. Because now they have a track record of their own, but they've also helped other people. You know, you learn the most when you teach somebody else. You don't learn the most when you learn. You learn the most when you teach. When you teach, two people learn. You learn and they learn. Um, so those are the people I'd really take probably the best advice from because they give you like specific advice. A lot of these other guys are telling you what worked for kind of them um, for the most part and kind of been a shitty spot. But like w what I'm trying to get at here is like, I would always invest in yourself. You know, whatever that may mean to you, invest in yourself. Pay somebody who is ahead of you, a couple steps ahead of you, you know, um, to learn what they know, you know? Like, that's how you get far ahead in life. Do you think the rich, successful person who's already built themselves up, they already have everything going well for them? Do you think when they have a problem they want to solve, they go and learn it by themselves? No, they just pay somebody to teach them because they understand it gets them there quicker. Um, now, of course, you might say, oh my God, well, they have all the financial means to do that and so on. But in the reality of it, it's not that expensive. To get a coach, it's like anywhere from 100 to $300 a month. You do that for one month. That's all. You save enough money to get a coach for one month. Take his plans and fucking run. <laughs> like, I'm serious. This will help out so many people. Take his fucking plans and run if you don't have the fucking money to pay for it. You know, ask him as many questions in that first month as possible, okay? Because a lot of the times, that initial setup is good for 12 months. It's good for, or not, it's good for 12 weeks. It's good for 20 weeks. So you can follow his plans. You can see how he did everything. Um, just by talking to him, you'll also learn a fucking shit ton. Uh, just don't be the dummy who just <laughs> tries to YouTube everything, in my opinion, because that just takes you so long, you know? Speed up the process. Um, ooh! Oh, yeah. That was my rant. We got about five more minutes of walking. Get the first meal in, do that phone call, and keep going on with the day. Feel like a good day so far. Got tons of sleep. Feeling pretty rejuvenated, ready to go. Definitely a little stiff, I'll tell you that. I'm a little stiff, dude. Uh, putting on so much weight really quick, dude. Takes a toll on your body, you know? I'm the heaviest I've ever been, so it's just like, <sighs> my heart's gotta catch up a little. My tendons, my ligaments, my joints gotta catch up, dude. Getting some knee pain just because I'm a heavy boy. My wrists sometimes fucking hurt because pushing all this weight, dude. Uh, but you gotta love that shit, bro. You gotta love that shit. Oh, I don't think I mentioned. Sometimes when you take your fitness slower, you'll actually like get a far quicker. You'll get farther quicker. A lot of people are training five, six days in a row. They also work a full-time job. They also barely get any sleep. And they're like, They'll be like, why am I putting on so much fat? Why am I not making progress? Because you're overdoing it. You're doing way too much. Your body's burning out, you know? Um, especially when your body burns out, it tends to just put on fucking weight really, really quick. So it's important to take it slow. Like my coach told me, if I need to, take a rest day every other day. Because I was complaining to him, like I felt like shit. Like at the very beginning of this bulk, I felt like shit. Because I blew up 20 pounds, right? I was putting on fucking like, two pounds of muscle per night. <laughs> like, I'm not joking you. Um, my body was just that tired. Um, and he's like, if you need to, take a rest day every other day. Take two in a row if you need to. Like, literally, the recovery is the most important part. So, like, what I've kind of came to the conclusion is a rest day every three days is super important. And that's what I tell my clients. I'm like, if you're able to, rest day every three days. If you're cutting, if you're bulking, I don't really care. 
Some people just like the Monday through Friday, perfectly fine. But if you really want to make quicker progress, a rest day every three days, it's most optimal, okay? Because if you go longer than that, you're gonna get closer to your red line. Your central nervous system, your central nervous system is gonna, you know, it's gonna decline, it's gonna get stressed out. Your inflammation and all your muscles is gonna raise up and you're just not gonna be as rested as you need to be each and every workout. So personally, I like more often rest days, you know? Um, so yeah, catch you in the next clip. <clears throat> all right, back from cardio, we got meal one on the table, which I'll actually just show you. So five eggs, a little bit of cheese on top, good amount of ketchup, because I love that shit. Got four slices of Dave's Killer Bread. These are 20 grams of carbs each, three grams of protein, whole grains. We got butter and jelly on top. And then we have about two servings of yogurt. So this is 30 grams of protein, uh, about 30 grams of carbs. So in total we got um, 110, maybe 120 carbs. I, I have to eat 120 um, for this first meal. At least 35 grams of protein, so we have plenty of that. We got about 60 here. Um, and the fats, they don't matter. We don't need any for this meal. Um, so this, this is basically my first meal every single day. I, I pretty much hit the carb goal or maybe a little bit under. And what I tend to do is actually add carbs to my second meal because it's a lot easier for me to get down. How my coach has me doing it right now is my first meal has like 120 grams of carbs. And my second meal has like no carbs. It has like 10 grams. So I usually end up eating around like 30 to 50 grams of carbs in that meal um, just because it's easier for me to get down, right? So that's this meal. I'm going to chew on this for a while. And then I'll pretty much just show you second meal, third meal, and we'll go work out. Um, this is my go-to breakfast every single day, though. Um, I, I really recommend finding foods that you like and just stick to them, you know. Um, this works for me really well. I don't get bloated. I'm getting muscle on it. I feel good. So all good, dude. All right, boys. Back again with meal two this time. Spent a couple hours, did some cleaning, looked over my content a little, trying to figure out what I should do going forward. Um, but it's about noon right now. We have meal number two. So six scrambled eggs, and then that's a Thomas bagel. Total 45 grams of protein, 50 grams of carbs, and uh, I don't know, about 30 grams of fat, something like that. Doesn't quite matter. Pretty good second meal though. Probably go take the dogs on a walk after this. Um, he's sitting right there. Hit up meal three here really soon. I'm excited to go train, bro. Um, probably spent a couple hours in the gym recording content and stuff like that. Yeah, pretty chill day so far. It's like 50 degrees out too, which is really, really nice for New York. So yeah. Okay, back with meal three, pre-workout meal of the day. Well, actually part of it, I should say. Um, a couple hours later, it's three o'clock right now. Just been making some TikTok videos and stuff like that. But I eat this meal. Actually, let me show you. <laughs> let me. Um, so we got about six ounces of ground chicken and one cup of rice in there. And this is just half the meal. I'm gonna have two bagels in a minute here after I eat this. I'm gonna get this down first. Let it sit for a minute, eat those two bagels. Probably just put some cream cheese on top of them. That will put me at about um, how do I do math here? I think that's 180 grams of carbs. So I'm definitely going way over for my carb. <laughs> yeah, I'm supposed to, I only need 140 for this meal. So we're at 180. Um, it's gonna be like 65 grams of protein or something like that. I only need 35. So yeah, that's that meal. I'm pretty hungry, but dude, this ground chicken, bro, I just, I don't like it to be honest. I, uh, there's like sometimes small bones in there, I'm gonna be honest, and it, 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 you can bite it down, it feels like your tooth is about to break in half. Um, and it, it's also, there's like, they put this special, their mixture in there, some like rosemary stuff, and it's, I don't know, I don't really like it, but I'm gonna just get it down like a dog. It's basically dog food, dude. <sighs> but hopefully it'll get me big. I just, I can't wait to go hit chest, dude. I can already feel my body, like, it's warm, it's ready to go, dude. Some days you can just tell it's going to be a good, uh, it's going to be a good workout. Try to slam some water. I think a big thing a lot of people miss out on is their water. And I say that because I miss out on it. 
I used to be so good with my water, um, but I've had to intake more as I've gotten bigger. So now it's even harder. Like I used to be able to do a gallon easily. Um, now I'm just kind of getting lazy with it, but I need like more than a gallon a day to get the pump I want to get or else I get like a headache and I get, I get a shitty pump. But I notice like the days I drink the most water, my pumps are, my energy is out of this world. Also always try to drink your water before your meal. I've noticed that if I eat and I drink like an excessive amount of water, my stomach kind of gets bloated. And from what I know, it actually digests slower. Because think about it, it goes through the large intestine first, which has to extract all the water. Like this is what my understanding of it is. I might be completely wrong, but food goes through like the large intestine first and the large intestine takes out all the water. Then the small intestine breaks, basically fully breaks down the food until it turns into poop. Um, so the kind of the more water you got in there, the longer it's going to take to go through the lot to go through the, what do I call it? The large intestine. <laughs> oh my God. My brain's out of here. Okay. That's meal three, the review of it. Um, <laughs> we will be next clip will probably be a uh, pre-workout and Angelo. I want you to hold it. Hey, five, eight, five, W's, five, W's in the shot. W's. What, what's today? My birthday. Hey, it's his and birthday. It's day. It's the best. He's a he's an adult now. Look at that beard. That shit thick. <laughs> All right, it's time for the pre-workout time. I ate the damn bagels. Now we got. Oh, fine. I think I might go with this today though. Because this shit had me feeling cool last time. I think I'm gonna go for some of that. Yeah, dude. I just be I be in the waiting lobby all day, so I just I'd start recording. You know, pre lobby wait. <clears throat> Pretty much. Queuing up for. I just been yapping to the camera all day. Queuing up for the fucking gym. <laughs> it's probably about 50 minutes long so far. Oh, you making a video, huh? Dude, I got nothing to do, so I just yap to it. <laughs> I don't know how you. <laughs> you can definitely yap for a while. So you gotta be a streamer. That's what I was. You gotta be like Jinxie. Trying to do at one point. Well, if you just stick with it, you'll do it. Yeah. You could be a streamer. Get a kick deal. Go hit up Aiden. Yeah. Yo, Aiden, what's up, bro? Yeah. I was thinking that could be my destiny. I mean, you don't like to stop playing video games, bro. <laughs> so, yeah. why not make money off it? Yeah, I just got a base down on my brother. <laughs> Looking pretty good for wipe. Oh my god. <laughs> Such a nerd. My real goal is to hit Challenger League, though. Woo! That would be some crazy shit. There's today's potion of choice. Got that. Mine. Mine's cooler. Mm. He's got the heel mix, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How cute. That's color. We got post work on there. So, we're gonna get ready. And go hit some motherfucking chest. Chest. Oh, it's chest day, baby. I know the last video was a chest day, but <laughs> we're going again. Because they're already on there, bro. Yeah, I'm scared. I need them. So we're going to do a couple bench, some dumbbells, some other stuff like that, and just go hard. It's the name of the game. Shoot for what? I'm getting 10. So you must at least get like... Like 5? Five. 5. Alright. Oh no. I don't want to go about it. I don't think listen to an ad right now. Yeah man, whoever's on Ox got to get off. Easy 12. All right, we're going for 275 max reps. I've never tested this before, so let's see. Oh, I got 12.
Simón. Simón. Up. Up. Oh. Uh, there's a good nine. Oh, I feel like I got pins and needles in my skin. I don't know why. Uh, I feels weird. Oh, I want to do like some upper chest, but then really focus on the chest up. You like that leanness? It's all right. <laughs> Shit. Biggest 20 year old. Biggest. <laughs> I was, I was gonna take you out to eat after, but you get no carbs. If I was your coach, how would you feel if I said that? What? You get no carbs today. Yeah, it'd be normal. <laughs> yeah, okay. Just be popping the zins left and right. <sighs> Carnivore? <laughs> and pickles. Yeah, it's good. When I'm about prep, I was Oh yeah, dude, I would dig into the pickle jar all night. I'd be squirting mustard in my mouth. Oh, at work, bro, I'm in the fridge, you know, I had mustard packets. Yeah! It was either Mark or Jen that was walking in the back room, I'm just like, I'm like, are you hungry? I'm like, yeah, but I can't eat. I get that, dude, I did that all the time. I actually like mustard. It's pretty good now that I'm hungry. <laughs> Six yeah. What's the strangest thing you ever ate on prep? Comment below. <laughs> okay. Are you ready? Comment. Ready. Yeah, she'll have it. About the first? That should be good. Would my weight stop rolling away? All right, we're taking the 110s for a swing. Let's see what we can get. Should be good. Uh, we got motherfucking triceps now, dude.
We're gonna try to focus on keeping it 90 degrees, don't go above. And then squeeze at the bottom and bring it towards my waist. Seems to just feel the best. Those are my cues. All right, we got more triceps. Um, this time, single arm. Different angle, instead of like this, we're going like this. This little head, a different head of the tricep. Um, yeah, I'm just brain dead right now, so I'm just gonna go for it. Alright dude, this fucking cable's messing me up. Alright, we got chest flies going on for a finisher most likely. Maybe a couple accessories, but my chest is fucking dead after all that, so let's finish it off strong. Oh dude, this setup isn't that good. Good warm up set. Don't know how many reps that was, but could definitely double that weight easily. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are back from working out. I'm dead. Let me run you through kind of what went on because I missed a couple of things. <coughs> um, towards the end of the workout, kind of cut off the camera and just locked in um, just to try to kill my triceps and this battery was dying. So we did uh, the single arms. We did flies, inclined flies, and I think that was about it. Did posing, photos, and so on. Um, right after my workout, though, I had 100 grams of dextrose and 30 grams of protein in a shake, mix it up with water, instantly pound it in the car on the way home. Uh, if you don't know what dextrose is, it's just like a super, super, super refined carbohydrate. I believe it's actually more simple than actually like sugar. So it basically is able to transport into your muscles like instantly um, because sugar basically turns into like glycogen for your muscles so like when you're working out that's the energy it's depleting is glycogen and that's why like at the end of the workout you feel tired your muscles are more depleted you know you get that insane pump in the first 10 minutes of your workout but then like two hours in you feel really soft right um so i instantly pound that and it just um, fills up my muscles and the protein goes to work to instantly repairing my muscles I had that 7.30, it is 9.30 right now. Um, edited some photos, posted Instagram, and really let that all digest to me. Now I am doing meal four of the day. Uh, we got one more meal to go. I'll show you what this is. So this is what I usually do. We got a good amount of steak over here. I don't know the exact ounces, probably eight to 10 though I would say. Um, two of them right there. I throw a lot of red hot right on top of them. And then we got, what is my cat doing, bro? Oh, he's deaf. He can't hear shit. And we got three sweet potatoes. These are usually around 600 grams in total. So that would put that at about 120, 130, somewhere around there, grams of carbs. Um, there's some good amount of fats in there. But sweet potatoes 
are really, really good for you. Um, I like them post-workout just because they make me feel good. They're very healthy. Uh, they're good for your skin. It's literally just the best carbohydrate um, in terms of nutrient density per gram, I believe. Um, so like if I was going to do a show prep, like the day that I'm, I'm no, if I was going to step on stage, the day I would step on stage, I'd be eating sweet potatoes, dude. Um, and like all throughout prep, I'm eating sweet potatoes. It's best carbohydrate ever. You got to be careful though, Lodo, because they do have a, a decent amount of fats in them. Um, so you got to make sure that fits the plan. Then a steak over here. Um, love my red meat on the bulk. I like to do it post-workout. It's the only time I had red, red meat every single day. Um, I don't ever do it when I'm cutting down just because there's too much, too much fats in it. But it seems to work out really well. Seems to help me repair a lot quicker. I added this in mm, a week and a half ago. And I've definitely said my recovery's gotten better. Um, and I've been feeling pretty good. So this has been my go-to meal. Sometimes it's fucking Reese's Cups, though. If I'm just not feeling hungry uh, or motivated, I'll just go to straight cereal, bro. <laughs> um, and I'll do steak later at night because my next meal is just going to be like a small keto meal. Um, try to keep the carbs out of it. Don't quite need them before I go to bed. Just a little bit more protein because I go to bed in two hours here. So if I just eat a little bit of something right before I go to sleep, like cottage cheese, which is like the best, uh, get that little bit of protein in. It's also long digesting, so like the steak will break down and digest pretty quick. Where uh, my understanding of cottage cheese is, it takes a little longer to digest. So um, we'll we'll shoot that later. But this is basically the full day of eating. I'm trying to take the bulk as serious as I do uh, the prep. Like the prep, everything was just military schedule. Like I basically ate at the same time every day, had the same daily schedule, ate the same exact thing. Um, and whenever I seem to go on bulk, I kind of get lazy with it. This is my first time like actually being on a bulk plan with a coach um, and actually listening to him. <laughs> so, yeah, I've been enjoying it. It's been uh, really, really good, feeling good, just super tired after my workouts, you know, definitely get a little brain dead, but it's kind of a part of the job. It's a part of it all. You know, I'd say a good way to judge how hard you're working out is just how do you feel after your workout? Like, do you feel dead? Do you feel depleted? Um, because if you don't, you probably didn't push yourself hard enough. And, you know, this goes for people who are really trying to put on a lot of muscle, you know, um, at this current stage of life. Like if your big goal right now is to put on a lot of muscle, bro, you got to push super hard in your workouts. You got to feel super dead and super depleted. Like when you get home, dude, you should be feeling hungry. You should be feeling just kind of your back aching and your muscles hurting and stuff like that. Um, and if it's not, you're just not pushing yourself hard enough is the best way to put it. You know, you're not eating enough in order to have the amount of energy to push yourself. Um, and that's kind of the way I've been looking at eating is to eat just enough to have the energy to push myself and build muscle, but not too much where I'm just packing on fat, right? I want to try to keep my top four abs um, just because I know if those went away, that would mean I, I probably pushed a little bit too hard, you know? Uh, I got a little too messy with the food is the best way to put it. It's very rare that you'll get fat eating healthy foods. And that's just because they're super filling. You know what I'm saying? Um, so it's really hard to stuff down way too much. Um, so, you know, try to stick to like 80, 90% clean foods. Of course, you have to sneak some cereal and shit like that in here and there. Um, but just try your, you know, always try your best to keep it clean foods because it's just the best way to go about it, you know? You'll feel better. So, yeah, this is this meal. I'm going to stop yapping. We're watching some Chris Bumstead. Um, just to keep my motivation high, you know. That's why I found it's been working is uh, watching the end goal, you know, to eat. Because I don't want to eat this shit. If I watch something funny, I'd probably not finish my plate. But if I watch him, I'm just like, I'm going to look better than this motherfucker. <laughs> nah, I love you, c -bum. All right. Uh, I'll catch you next clip. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is now midnight, and I have meal number five in my hands. Yogurt. Um, don't have any cottage cheese. Usually do the cottage cheese, but I don't got it. <laughs> so we're going in with the yogurt. We got about probably two servings here, maybe a little less. So that would be 30 grams of protein. 34 grams of carbs. Perfect last meal. 
as you can see here, it's just gonna chow this down. Mmm. Ah. Dude, yogurt's so good. Um, yeah, that's the last meal, dude. Just went live on Instagram for a while. Connected with everybody. Really good live, I'll tell you that. Letting people into my life. It was really good. Big goal for mine this year is just being even more transparent with everything. Um, just everything I do, you know, who I am, and what's going on. So, don't know what to say, because I'm pretty fucking tired right now. <sighs> I want to get some sleep, dude. Stay below extra late, though, to be honest. Now I can't wake up at my time I was trying to wake up at every morning, which is 7 a.m. Like, I could, but, like, in a bodybuilding context, does that make sense? No. I might as well sleep in. So, we might go for the no alarm route. Not quite sure. Oh, yeah, I forgot you guys are here. Jesus Christ, bro. <laughs> All right, that was the video. Um, I'm going to sleep after I finish this. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll be doing more of these. Um, it's important you comment down below what you want to hear about, okay? Because I want to share my day-to-day -day life, but I want to talk about certain things in here, you know? I want to give you guys the knowledge that I may have that you may not have, you know, just because this is my life. So I just want to share with you everything so that you can improve your fitness journey is the best way to put it. So let me know what's up. I'll be sure to talk about it. Other than that, I'll catch you on the next episode of Getting Fat with Ryan. Peace out. <laughs>